Hello, my name is Hugh Rorty from Rutgers University. I'll be talking to you today about the work we have been performing uh, to measure the, and quantify the coastal waters of the Mid-Atlantic. The research group that I work in is known as the Center for Ocean Observing Leadership, otherwise known as RU Cool. We will be celebrating our 30th year of operations this October. RU Cool creates knowledge of our ocean planet by pushing the limits of new technologies in these eight uh, core focus areas. RU Cool works with industry partners to develop and operate state-of-the-art sensor technologies and integrates the resulting data products into models to deliver the highest fidelity picture of the ocean. One of the integrated technologies is high-frequency radar. Uh, high-frequency radar is a remote sensing technology that measures the coastal ocean within 200 kilometers of the shore. This is a picture of, the, of a radar located at the beach in Lewis, Delaware. HF radar measures the ocean surface currents once an hour. A single radar station, as shown here on the left, is capable of measuring the radial currents that are moving towards the radar, shown in blue, or away from the radar, shown in red. When you combine the data from several stations, you can then visualize the total surface currents, uh, as shown here on the right. This animation shows the currents off New Jersey for an eight-hour period this past August. We began delivering the surface current measurements to the US Coast Guard through the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Observing System in May, 2009. Maracuz is one of 11 regional observing systems within the Integrated Ocean Observing System, which, which is an effort which is led nationally by NOAA. Usage of the surface current data has steadily grown to where the US Coast Guard requests the data at least 80 times per week. One of the future challenges for the surface current measurements via HF radar is the development of offshore wind. The Biden administration has established a target of developing 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. That could equate to 3,000 turbines operating within um, the mid-Atlantic in the coming years. How will these turbines impact uh, the HF radar and the surface current measurements? How will this affect the Coast Guard uh, response to search and rescue cases? We are working with the Coast Guard Office of Search and Rescue to see how the turbines will impact their operations and our measurements. As I mentioned in my previous slide, my work at Rutgers with HF radar contributes to mid the Mid-Atlantic Ocean Observing System. The IUS regional associations extend from the head of tide to the exclusive economic zone as shown here. But how exactly how much ocean is this? So we received the, this shape file on the left uh, from IUS that delineates the Maracuz boundary, and we divided the shape file up into these eight subregions as shown here. However, if you zoom in on the file, the resolution is very coarse, and this could lead to errors if we use the file to quantify the surface waters of the Mid Atlantic. In order to solve this problem, we used the National Hydrography data set from the USGS national map to develop a more refined coastline. Uh, we processed the hydrography data in ArcGIS Pro. And we uh, selected, merged, clipped, and uh, dissolved water feature boundaries within the general confines of the IU designated Maracuz area to develop this more refined uh, boundary. This allowed us to calculate the surface waters of the Mid Atlantic. In the end, there was only a 0.2% difference between the boundary provided by IU and the one we calculated uh, in this process. So the boundary from IUS was uh, 377,000 square kilometers, and we came up with just about 379,000 square kilometers. Uh, but there were um, uh, differences uh, in the subregions, some as large as 14%. Uh, for instance, the IUS boundary for New York Harbor had it, uh, an area of 746 uh, square kilometers, while we calculated it to be 851. So comparing the different regions we established, the bays and estuaries account for about 7% uh, of the surface waters uh, within the Mid-Atlantic, while the Atlantic Ocean dominates the region at 93%. So each of these white dots represents the um, area, surface area um, for the region. And this uh, large white dot represents the surface area uh, out here in the Atlantic, so dominating the uh, uh, 
the area of the Marcuse. This allows us to gauge how much of the surface currents in the region we are currently measuring. Uh, the Mid-Atlantic Shelf, we're, uh, aver we're averaging about a 40% coverage of the, of the Atlantic Ocean uh, waters with HF radar. Uh, Block Island Sound, New York Harbor and Delaware Bay, again, in the, in the 30s and 40s. Long Island Sound and Chesapeake stand out as having low coverage uh, due to H with HF radar. So to, so to conclude, quantifying the waters of the Mid-Atlantic allows us to calculate the amount of surface water we are measuring with HF radar. We were unsure if the boundary from IUs could lead to errors, so we used data from USGS to refine the coastlines for an improved boundary product. Now that we know the relative abundance of the estuarine versus coastal ocean, could these measurements factor into how we deploy our resources for ocean observing? Uh, since uh, the bays only account for 7% of surface waters, should we only be uh, allocating 7% of our uh, ocean observing resources uh, to measuring these currents? Or because uh, these currents are much closer to the coast and people interact with them more, should we dedicate more resources uh, to measuring the currents closer to the coast? Uh, I think the, that'll be a, a next step for uh, future work to uh, develop a decision um, rule as to how we allocate resources for surface currents. So thank you.